Today we're going to check out running Octoprint on an Android phone with Octo 4A. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, today we are going to check out Octo 4A. It's a program that allows you to run Octoprint on an Android phone. And given the fact that Raspberry Pis are pretty hard to get right now, this could be really useful. Now, Tom3DP did a video on this not too long ago, and he did pretty much the same exact thing that we're going to do today. But I've been getting some questions in my email about Octo 4A and if you could run it with Clipper. So I want to take it just a little bit further. But first we have to get it all set up and make sure it's going to work. And I wanted to check this whole thing out for myself because this could be really handy. I happen to have a lot of Android phones just sitting around that are no longer in use. And probably a lot of you do too. Plus they're very affordable nowadays. So let's jump right in and see how this whole thing's going to work. So here's the phone we're going to be dealing with today. This is my Samsung Galaxy S5. I believe I got this in 2014, but it should have more than enough power to run Octoprint and Octo 4A. So we will need a splitter to use this OTG port to be able to power the phone while it's running Octoprint and plug our printer into it, but we'll talk about that in a minute. While we're getting set up, I'm just going to use the standard Samsung power supply to power it. So the battery on this one is probably garbage by now. It doesn't hold a charge at, hardly at all. I have to leave it plugged in all the time if I want to use it. But I did do a factory reset so that we could walk through it step by step. If you're going to do this on an Android phone, I highly recommend you go ahead and do a factory reset just so you can start from scratch. And that way we can walk through it step by step together. So let's go ahead and power up and let it go through all the stuff that it's going to check out on its own. Since we did factory reset, it's going to have a whole bunch of questions for us. We'll just go through this real quick. We're just going to use Wi-Fi only. We'll go ahead and hook up to the Wi-Fi. Punch in our password. We have our IP. It's going to connect to the internet. We're connected. Go ahead and go to the next screen. It's going to go through and check for all the software updates, all that good stuff. This will take a while. I'll come back when it's done. I'm not going to copy my Google settings. But I am going to go ahead and sign into Google so we can use things like the Play Store. After all the initial setup, the Wi-Fi, going through all the security, logging in, all that good stuff, we're at the home screen. I would recommend going through and removing as many apps as you can. We want performance. We don't need a lot of this stuff to be able to run Octoprint on the phone. Plus, just let it set here and be on the network for a while in case it has some updating to do. That can take a while. Okay, I've disabled every app that I could find, and I've also let this set around for a little while just in case it had some updates. It actually can't contact the update service, so we've probably missed that boat. It's probably too old. But I did leave Chrome because we need to go to GitHub next. So we're going to head to Chrome, and I'm just going to search for GitHub Octo 4A. There it is. Feel free Linux. We can go to the release page to download it. This is an APK file. You can't get it from the Google Play Store because of the way that it get, does get installed on the phone. So you have to use the APK file, which is just an installable package for Android. So we'll download Octo 4A 1.0.4 APK. Then we're going to get some permission warnings because we do want to install this on the side. So let's do update permissions. And we're going to allow. We're OK with this file. We know where we're getting it from. Remember, anything you do like this, you're at your own risk. This is GitHub, this is open source, and hopefully you're using a phone that you really don't care about. So we're just going to say OK. And we'll do Open. Then we can click on that file. It did get blocked, so let's go to Settings. And we'll allow from unknown sources. And we'll hit OK. We're going to allow this installation only. This should probably be the only install we're ever going to do on this phone. Install. Play Protect, you can probably do either, but I'm just going to go ahead and decline it. The app doesn't actually take that long to install, but the Octoprint part does. So let's just go ahead and do an open. And then we're going to hit install Octoprint. We want to allow access to the camera. I'll go ahead and enable reporting, just so it helps them out. And it's going to start the install. This does take a while, about 30 minutes the last time I tested it. So we'll let this run. It's okay if the phone goes to sleep. Note, you're going to have some power settings in here that when it does go to sleep, it's going to slow it down a bit. So come back and check on it occasionally. 
We'll want to deal with that when we're using it for Octoprint as well, but we'll do that after the install is done. And about the only other thing you need to make this work is some sort of adapter so that you can plug in your printer and charge the phone at the same time. Since most phones have an OTG port on the go, they can do just that from the same port. But you have to be able to run Octoprint continuously during the print and your battery's probably not going to last that long, so it's always going to be charging. And if it's an older phone, the battery probably doesn't hold the charge all that well anyway. But let me show you the adapter and how to get it set up real quick. Here's the adapter that I picked up. It just has USB-A on this side, and then we have micro USB, because that's the phone I'm using. They make them with USB-C too, if you've got that one. But one side will go to the phone, and the other side your charger will plug in. So A side to your printer, your phone charger goes in here, and then this side to your phone. And now you can charge and use your printer, Octoprint, all at the same time. And now that the install is complete, you've got your printer plugged in, it's going to ask you some questions about this USB device. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to use this app by default with this USB device, the printer, and we'll just hit OK. And then here's your battery optimization. You don't want to optimize the battery for this app because it has to run when the screen's off, it runs for a long time, so you're always going to have it plugged into the charger, so you want to make sure you leave it off. So we'll just open settings, and we want to tell it yes to do not optimize battery usage. And you can always go into settings and your application settings, check out application manager, we'll go into that app, Octoprint for Android, you can go down to battery, and you can confirm that it says optimized battery usage, app not optimized. So we're good there. Back to Octa 4A, we can confirm our printer is plugged in. It even knows it's a Prusa Mark III. This is the IEP that you can go to to get to Octa 4A from your computer. You do have to use port 5000. Remember these phones are set DHCP, so that IP might change. You should be able to set it static if you need to, but it's going to be just a little bit different on a phone. And then you have your camera settings. It's disabled by default, but we can fix that up. And that's where we're going next, to the settings. We want to allow Octoprint for Android to take videos and use our camera. We're going to enable the open SSH server. That's so that we can get into it with SSH via something like a PuTTY tool, and we can work on it just like any other Octoprint instance. And then set up your SSH password, whatever you'd like that to be. You can change your SSH port if you'd like to. By default on this app, it's 8022. And you can start that server on boot, which I'm going to go ahead and do. Then we come to camera settings. And this one was actually somewhat challenging for me to get it to be the correct orientation. So you can pick your camera source, back or front camera. Set your resolution to whatever you'd like it to be. Let's just go with 720p. And then you can rotate the image. You can also set FPS, turn on flash, disable autofocus. But mainly what I want to know is what orientation the image is going to be. So let's go back out to the main screen. And if you just click on camera now that you've turned it on, you should see a preview of it. So that looks good in this orientation. But then if you jump to your web browser, Octoprint's going to start just like any other instance. It's going to come up with the setup wizard. We can run through this real quick. Notice when you run through the wizard, the only thing that might be a little different is the server commands. They're not going to be the same commands you would use for a regular Raspberry Pi on Linux install. They're going to be a little bit different, but they've already provided this for you. So let's hit next and finish. And what I wanted you to note was going to the control tab. You can see that it's not in the correct orientation anymore. And honestly, with all of the settings in the webcam, if you go into settings and then take a look at those, you can flip that image around, but I have not found a combination by spinning it in Octo 4A on the phone and spinning it here in Octoprint that it actually makes it the right way in the control tab. You can get the time lapses and everything to work correctly, but it never shows correctly in this tab. That's really the only bug that I found, and I'm hoping they get it corrected. But I'll show you how to get it set up so that it's at least correct for all your time-lapse videos. 
And pretty much the only other setting you need to be worried about is install the plugin extras because a lot of plugins aren't going to work if you don't install those. So depending on what you use, like Octolapse, it's going to need all of those files. So just let that install. But everything else, we're basically ready to go. We can start using it. Now if you really want to, you can go open a browser on your phone and just go to localhost colon 5000. And this is going to bring up the Octoprint instance running on the phone. There it is. You can log in and use it just like Octoprint from your computer. And it's perfectly usable. You can use it right here. I don't find it very convenient using it from the phone. You could install something like Touch UI if you wanted to, to make it a little bit easier. That's just the blockier design. Check that out in plugins. But I think it's still way easier to use it from your computer. So with all that covered, let me show you how I got it set up to be able to do my time-lapse correctly. So first, we're just gonna use the default time-lapse settings in Octoprint rather than using Octolapse. I'm just trying to get the camera set up correctly. So let's go to time-lapse. I'm just gonna make it set to time, 10 second intervals. You can set this however you want. Remember, you do need to save and save your changes before it'll be applied. But the next tip is use the virtual printer so you don't have to wait for your printer while you're just checking on the camera orientation. So go to settings, scroll all the way down. The last one will be virtual printer and just hit the enable box. You can save that. And now up here under serial port, you'll have virtual. It just simulates the G code for you. You can connect up, but it will also take the time lapse. Of course, there's nothing happening. It's just gonna be blank video, but we can still check to see how the camera looks. So we'll just kick off a file and there's really no need to wait with the virtual printer. You can just go ahead and cancel it. It will still render a time lapse. So we'll just hit cancel and hit yes. You can see up here, it's gonna say rendering. It went to render and then time lapse ready. So then you can head back to time lapse just like any other, and we can take a look at it. And you'll notice it's in the correct orientation with the printer. But how did I do that? Well, like I said before, in the control tab, it's still on its side. I can't really figure out how to get that correct. But on the phone, I've had the best luck with putting the phone in this orientation with the charger plug on the right hand side. It does change it if you flip over the opposite direction. So I leave it like this and then I go to settings, go down to camera, image rotation. I set it to 270 degrees. And then if you go back to print, you can check on the camera. It'll give you a snapshot. It's upside down, but the time-lapse recordings turn out correct. Now, I know that that's a really odd thing to have to do to get this thing to work, but that's what I did to get the time-lapse set up correctly. Hopefully, you won't have to do this in the future. On future upgrades, we're at 1.0.4 now. Hopefully, the next version, none of this will exist. But that's how I got it going. And really the last thing that I wanted to touch on for this video was the SSH setup. You can log into it just like you can any other Octoprint or Linux install. I just use the PuTTY tool. You'll want to go to that IP that's listed on the screen there on the phone, same one you use for Octoprint, and you can set the port to whatever you want, but it defaults to 8022. And we'll just open that up. You can accept the key. And the login here is going to be root and then whatever you set that password to be. So you have a full install here that you can use. If we take a look at where we are, it just dumps you right into root. All of the Octoprint files are here. And if we include the hidden directories, you can see that doc Octoprint. That's where all your configuration files are going to be for this instance. So if you're used to hacking and tweaking on your Raspberry Pi Octoprint, you can do it right here as well. And that's pretty much all there is to it to get this thing set up. And I have done quite a bit of testing, and with the Samsung S5, it just seems to work. There's enough power there to get everything done. But I did have to show you a time lapse that I did from this phone.
And there it is, Octo 4A. Philippe did an amazing job on this, converting it over to be able to run on an Android phone. It's going to be really useful, and if you can't find a Raspberry Pi, this might help you out. Now, there are a few things that I stumbled across that didn't go so well, but I hope the next version irons all that out. Please consider going to GitHub, checking out Philippe's work, and maybe supporting him. Now, going forward, I do want to do a couple of extra things here now that we have it installed and we know that it works. One of those being running Clipper. But that will be for another video. Hopefully you found this helpful. That's it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.